<laughs> oh, you know what it is. It's the making of an Instagram post. Didn't work out so well yesterday. There was some interruption with the. Well, we'll see what happens today. Let's not dwell on the past. Matter of fact, I think I will. Let me turn this off. Turn this off for a second. DJ Spivey from the Spirit Mix. Ah, I mean, the Glory Mix. I keep on saying the Spirit Mix, but it's Glory. Nah, I don't worry about it. Whoa. Hey, what did I play this morning? I don't worry about what I played this morning. I played stuff. <laughs> A regular, you know, Nina and, and uh, Marvin, Valerie Simpson and Prince and to somebody else in there. Somewhere. Anyway, and then I went, oh, then I went to DJ Rome. And then I ended up DJ Spivey. Why am I talking soft? Hey, you increase my volume so you hear me. <clears throat> I had this thing in my throat. I think it's from, tell you the truth. I think it's from this old, this old incense. This is the last stick. Now, shall I go with the last stick and keep on getting the throat thing? Or shall I? Well, let me start off with today. Maybe sometime today I will get some real, not some real, some other incense. This is citronella. Because it feels like, and anyway, I'm still talking for soft. Why am I talking soft to you? I should be, hey, that's what I should talk about. I mean, before I get to, before I get to the Instagram, first let's take our little swig. As you know, what happens is I, uh, I'm just a behind the scenes making of an Instagram post, as I said before. Let me not continue to repeat myself. Certain things we do, you know, I report on how much I walked today, this morning, that kind of thing. It, it, it was supposed to be chillier. I came out here, I thought it was going to be really chilly. But it wasn't. So very good. Well, you know what I use this towel for? First, I started this. This started in uh, in New York when the pandemic hit a couple of years ago, whatever it was. And I would walk with my, you know, with my phone in the um, and headphones. I had my uh, yeah, because these was down here. I wasn't down there. I had uh, the ear the earbuds, the status earbuds. I think that's what I had. Maybe I had those. And so I would I would walk and, and have this to hold, to hold the the uh, the uh, thing to hold, the towel, the hand towel, whatever, to hold the phone because I'm just that way, you know. I, I I'll prevent. If you don't want to be no mess, don't don't make no mess. My grandma used to say that. And so uh, since I got used to doing that, um, and I still I got to get a new case for this thing. But then again, I'm so I'm gonna try. I'm gonna I'm thinking about getting a new case for this. But anyway, I use this. But now when I walk, I use it. Sometimes I put it on a, a bench when I'm sitting. Extra layer of keep the marble because I'm in. The, I walk the cemetery. Keep the marble, making me cold. Cold butt. I don't want to be cold butt. So less cold. Anyway, the, I, I was thinking this morning about. Because of certain things that's happened about bullying, right? And I say, you no, know, how come it's like, okay, first of all, you know, you have your alpha males, you have your beta males, you have the, with all those kind of males, right? But I'm what's called a sigma male, right? Now, a sigma male is really kind of interesting thing to be, right? And uh, so nothing really phases me, you know? And a lot of times when things happen, I look at everything as like, uh, who, who, who is like this? Is somebody like this? Well, I look at anything as absurd. This is so absurd that here's a secret. It's entertaining. <laughs> it's so absurd that it's entertaining to me because I let sometimes I let things play out. You know, people think they're taking advantage or something like that. I just let things play. It'd be sometimes it'd be years. I just let things play out. You know, because I'm being entertained. Now here's the other. Here's the other. Let me tell you something. I'm an audio dramatist, but I'm trained as a playwright also. I'm trained in the theater, but I'm trained as a playwright. I'm trained as a stage manager, playwright, whatever. But what happens in a in a play, I let, especially with rehearsal, I just let things happen, you know, so that I could 
get little gems. And as a playwright, I'm constantly writing in my head. I'm constantly writing scenarios. So all these things that people think are doing that's like kind of strange, you know, to me, it's like, it's fodder. How do you say it? It's It's material. <laughs> because I throw it into audio drama in a second. This, maybe I don't like this. So. No, I'll leave it. So anyway, let me go into my history of bullies, the people who tried to bully me. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay, not everybody, but let me give you some, so let's, we're gonna talk about Black Panther a little bit later, we'll do something about it. Let me do, uh, should I do women? Yeah, let me do them. Okay, there's, let me do just three women that are that influenced by childhood development, right? Well, there's more than that, but just the, the, the three main ones, right? There's my grandmother, it was, you know, pure love for me. There's my mother, it was indifference, right? And then there's my aunt, my my mother's older, old older daughter, my mother's older sister, my grandmother's daughter, my well, oldest daughter, uh, you know, like that. She was the bully, the evil aunt. I mean, total evil. I mean, evil you would not believe, you know. And she tried several times. It was weird because she could, I don't know, when she, she tried to manipulate whatever, but she couldn't do it to me. And I think it really upset her a lot. It, it bothered her that she couldn't get to me. It's, it's not that, well, and it's just, just the way it was, right? Okay. So that's the early, that's early, my early childhood bullying because I first my with my mother um, I first my recollection of my mother my earliest stages it was that uh, well when she was um, uh, well, I, suppose I was about three years old two and a half something like that and, you know so I remember her then on, on 531 St. Paul's place where uh, well, Morrisina, well I was I was born at Morrisina Hospital the Morrisina section of the Bronx Morrisina Hospital okay um, so anyway so so, so my earliest thing was my mother was just basically she was there just a, you know, brief whatever. But then my next recollection was shortly after, maybe three years after, because she caught polio, right? So she, my first really real clear recollection of my mother is in the iron lung. She was in the iron lung. You don't know what that is, do you? Because you're too young for iron lungs. She's an iron lung. Let's just put it that. That way, at Welfare Island, the Gold War Memorial Hospital. She's in Ireland. That's where we, we used to go visit her. They're in the Iron Lung, you know. Anyway, so oh, let me put this up a little bit, make my head cold. Um, so that's my first recollection of my mother. And my first recollection, again, of my aunt is that she just evil. <laughs> An evil that couldn't touch me. A bully, even, you know what I mean? Very interesting, right? And uh, 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 so anyway, so my next, so let me leave them alone, right? That's 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 that. But now another uh, bully in my in my uh, life, right, was my uh, was my uh, at, 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 in at Livingston College. Uh, we were is a very unique college, you know. We we were tra trained. The teachers were from all over the map. They weren't like all over the map like you know like A.B. Spellman was one of the teachers there you know um, there was a just an extraordinary group of, of, of people you know um, what's the name uh, the uh, Pulitzer Ride or whatever the Nobel Prize winning author you know the woman you know whatever wrote Beloved and, and Bluest Eye that woman right she was one of the, she, was, she was the English popping out I, I didn't take she, I never took one of her classes right my favorite teacher, one of my favorite teachers of all time, Pepsi Charles, peace and blessings on her eternal soul. I love Pepsi so much, right? But the balance out there, love, we had some people, that was Hattie Gossett Jr. <laughs> Hattie Gossett, Hattie Gossett, uh, 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 Louis Gossett Jr.'s wife, first wife, whatever it is, was Hattie Gossett. She's English, she thought she was all that in a bag of chips, right? Terrible person. <laughs> A bully of all bullies. She couldn't bully me, and that bothered her to no end. I even infiltrated her little group of of, of, of women's, her little women's group, right? Right. She she was she was my English uh, Pepsi was my English, but another English teacher was Hattie was another one of my English teachers, right? Of uh, because my undergraduate degree is in English literature, film studies, 
and uh, and communications, right? So this is just I'm just talking about English literature people, right? <laughs> and, and so poor Hattie. And so she she had this she made this whole thing about grades and stuff like that. It was supposed to be that the class would vote on your grade. Well, well somehow this complicated the class would vote on your grade, right? So we, we had that clear, right? And so at the end of the semester, you know, you're turning up papers, all the rest of that stuff. Um, so how so the class wanted we had we had a number system like like one was the highest two three four like like under under four whatever it is but one you had to be a one right one was high it wasn't like a a b c and whatever the comp it was this is Livingston College this is exper experimental college don't worry about it but and so poor Hattie and so she had made this thing that you know the class would vote on your grade and that, that, trying to be progressive I guess or whatever have you so. The class gave me, like, this guy is extraordinary. The class gave me a one, like the highest thing. <laughs> that was what we had, right? Well, Hattie, poor Hattie, she, she, uh, how do you say, it? she usurped her own rule and usurped the class's wishes and gave me a two rather than a one, right? There can't be notes for, I'm, uh, I, I didn't care about, I don't care about no grades or nothing like that, you know. And it's English, you know, I'm communications. I, I didn't care about that. But she really thought that she could get that, right? But then I understood why she was doing that. I, I made her so angry because, first of all, one of her, her girl, she had this whole little women's cabal, right? <laughs> one of them was a girlfriend, well, two, well one of them was a girlfriend of mine, well, uh, Diane Brown. Diane Brown is a cousin to uh, Sarah Dash. It's just a complicated thing. Don't worry about it. It's, it's, it means nothing, right? And so Diane Brown, she, cute little thing, you know, my kind of woman, you know, my kind of girlfriend, right? And uh, at one time, Diane was she was with this little group of women, oh, well, girls, whatever it's because Hattie. Cause we had a school like basically the the teachers, the instructor, whatever we could could fraternize with the with the students. You know, we all sort of like it was a, it was a pro very progressive school, right? So it wasn't like we were separated big by big time anything. So <laughs> at one time, I I found a, a while a while after this happened, Diane was with some other girls, including Hattie was was one of the people there, and uh, she was describing my organ, right? She was saying how. Big and or whatever it is like that. I guess they. I don't know what they thought. Anyway, so, so that's that's you know, and you know how little girls be talking or whatever it is. Okay, let's leave that alone for a second. So at one point we was doing this uh, play. We want to call it. It, it, it happened at a place called. Uh, we we it was the uh, the funeral for Livingston College. You know because we realized at some particular point they're trying to kill Livingston College. You know they are. Uh, the, the, they just, it, they weren't having it. You know, it was too progressive. You know, the, the teachers were with the students, the students were teaching. It was like, it was chaos for them. You know, think of it, you know what it's like, I think on the West Coast, they had uh, Berkeley, right? On the East Coast here, we had uh, Old Westbury, I'm talking about radical college. Then you had Antioch down in Ohio, right? And then, then you had Livingston. Now, Livingston was very, very interesting in that it was like an HBCU, Right, in the middle of a Ivy League college, talking about Rutgers, right? So it was this wild, right? So we were we, we knew that they were trying to kill Livingston College, and so what they were they they, they were doing they were taking it, uh, uh, well they were they were trying to kill it. There's this guy, this uh, Emmanuel Mestinine, this, this this guy who was trained by the Rand Corporation, you know, had the strings. He was the he was the dean. He had the whatever. And we everybody said, you see the writing on the wall. So we would. Korea, we was doing this this funeral for Livingston College, right? As part of we did all this planning, right? And one of the, well, I was one of the planners, right? For some theater, right? <laughs> and uh, and also, uh, well, uh, Hattie was one of the planners. Uh, 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 what's his name? Um, well, I say Pepsi Charles, dear Pepsi. She was one of the planners. Avery Brooks, one of the planners for this this event that we was having, right? Well. As we were planning this, we, we had we was meeting at different places. And one time we met where I was living at the time, right? Well, my girlfriend at the time, she, uh, Adrian, what a what a mess. Adrian was a genius, right? She was like one of those mental people. She's like a real genius, right? 
and kind of young, but she was genius. And so for, I don't know, I don't know how what set her off what it is, but she when we having this meeting, and I'm just having a meeting, whatever happened, and she was she was in the room, but she would come out, right, to destroy. I don't say destroy the meeting, but she wanted my attention. I don't know what the deal was. I, I to tell you, I'm oblivious to a whole bunch of stuff. And she was she came, and we having this meeting, we sitting in a circle. She came and was was weeping and sat on my lap. We having this meeting. I'm having a meeting behind her. I'm trying to I, you can see Patty and all these people are just looking at what the hell's going on. This guy, <laughs> the girl is upset. He's ignoring her. We having this meeting. He's paying attention to the meeting. It was hilarious, right? I think that really set Hattie off too, because I. Anyway, it set Hattie off. So she was she was a favorite bully or whatever it is. I don't know why I bring all that stuff up. Why I bring all that stuff up? Right, because she was like a classic bully, but she didn't know I had an evil aunt, so it didn't bother me. That you, we couldn't bother me at a very young age. I was with around people that couldn't bully me. So, <laughs> what are you going to do? I tell you, and let me tell you my last, the last bully that was really funny. I'm gonna leave the males out of it. This is a female bully, man. This is Valley Venice, the, the, who became station manager. Um, for WBAI, right? Now she was stage manager when they made me arts director. I don't even think she wanted me to be arts director, but somehow it happened, right? So I was arts director, right? And all that time, you know, I man, as you have to understand, I didn't really want to be arts director. I just put my resume in, so whoever was becoming arts director had to beat me on, on paper. You know, they had to beat me on my resume, but, but I wasn't paying attention because I'm, I'm, I had a good time. I, I was production engineer for the station. I mean, I was, uh, you know, I, have, I was doing my plays, I had my groups. I was, I, I was planning to work in like, like three days a week so that I could go back to school. I had grand plans. And then they made me arts director. All that went, zoop. had to give up no more radio as a regular program. You know, I, it's all kinds of things. I, I stopped production engineer. I would only, I, it, was, it was crazy. It wasn't was crazy for me. It's crazy for everybody else. They didn't understand. Uh, so I, I still tra train people. I still uh, um, taught people radio, especially in my department, the arts department. I, if, my, if you was part of my arts department, you had to run your own board. You had to run. You had to be your own board engineer, right? Whereas other departments, you know, they had, well, whatever they had. So my department was completely independent, right? All the DJs, everybody could run their own boards. Okay, great. So. So that automatically, and plus, because I knew the station, I, I, I was, I, I, I had contacts with each cabals. BA was nothing but a bunch of cabals, right? And I, and all the cabals respected me. The engineers, the the, the news department, the, you know, the, 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 well, not so much the public, well, yeah, public affairs, of course, the arts department, everybody respected me because nobody could, I could do everything. Nobody could challenge me, you know? Okay. So... And plus, I brought young people into the station, trained them, all kinds of things that people weren't doing. Okay. So I, for some reason, I, I, I you know what I think it was, to tell you the truth. I think that Valerie did not like dark skinned black men. I, I'm just saying. She liked boule class, you know, like she had brothers and sisters that were, you know, like lawyers and stuff like that. Here she is running on, well, whatever. All I'm trying to say is that she, for some reason, she just. Oof. But she couldn't touch me because I'm arts director. She's manager. <laughs> At first, it was uh, I want to get into uh, who, uh, the, the program directors. But anyway, so I mean, I would do stuff like finally when I became arts director, I knew that it was the kind of job that would consume you. So uh, I started taking capoeira. So I had to do capoeira classes. So I would say, gotta go. <laughs> and I would go, right? But doing well, I would train, you know what I mean? I was standing on my hands. I would do that all the time, like in the hallway, waiting for the elevator. I would stand on my hands and do and do push ups, you know, to whatever push ups on the floor, on the wall, hands like that, like that. And I would wear all kinds of things, you know, where I would I'd be proper for, for certain kind of me. But then you know, I have all kinds of outfits and stuff like that. Uh, the, I would sit a lot of people, even before then, when I did the print special, whatever. So, Anyway, so I would do stuff that you would see Valerie, <coughs> excuse me, smoke. You would see Valerie, you could see her getting upset. Like, this guy's not acting right. He's not being, I don't know, black middle class. I have no idea what, what her, her bugaboo was, right? Well, I do have an idea. Like I said, I think she just didn't like dark skinned black men, but we don't get into that. 
And so that's the story, man. She would try to bully me. It wasn't working. So that's what it is. That's my thing with bullies. So I don't I don't deal with bullies. Ah boy, I'm sorry it took all that time to say that, man. This is well, this is making up, so you're not supposed to be no this is for my archival purposes only. So excuse me. Let's let's go. Oh, let's get to the Let's get to the Instagram. Oh, before we get to the Instagram, oh wait, did I take the? Oh, I gotta take the. Oh, take the go. I gotta take the airplane mode off so I can see how many steps we walk today, and report it to you. I haven't started writing this down on my thing because this is like what we call. What do you call this? Uh, let's go. My morning walking. My morning walk data. Oh, here it is. Fifteen thousand. 803 steps. That's 10.59 kilometers or kilometers, however you all say that, right? Okay, so uh, 10.59 kilometers. I'll go there. I have to go here because we got to change change kilometers into um, 10.59 kilometers. Oh, geez. I keep on forgetting. Did I just say, say 5.9? Yeah, I guess it was five nine. Well, if it wasn't, it's going to be five nine now. Five nine kilometers. K I L O M kilometers to miles. Ten five five nine. So I wrote a uh, ten point five nine kilometers is equal to six point five eight miles. Well, six point five eight zero three. 209 miles to be exact. I'm just reading off the day. What can I say? So that's how much that's how much we just how much I walked this morning. So there you go. There you there you go. Okay. Let's get down. Let's get down. Let's get down down down. Let's get down. This is gonna be a long one. Sorry about that. Let me get oh oh gotta get the props right, man. You know. Should I leave this up like this? Yeah, I'm gonna leave this up. Ah. Wet my whistle. I got this dilemma because I ate bad last night at the movie theater. Terrible food. And uh, I, I, I think I'm just I'm gonna eat my water, and then I'm gonna go out and get up for for tonight. I'm gonna have my spinach and mushroom, bunch of other stuff like that, even egg, maybe. No, maybe not. Anyway, but I really got to clear out my system from what I have. So here's somebody. Oh, my chef in Cape Town. It's sausage, tomato, cucumber, and this egg thing. Let me give him a like for that. Like. I mean, let me go ahead. Let me see who else is on this Instagram here. Who's this? Coffee bean. You're out there with somebody. Bunch of white people. Must be a. Uh, oh, must be one of his tour groups that came through. Okay. With golf guy, that poet we were. You know. Ah, God, man, I, I want to get back. Get back to South Haven Beach for a while. So, I gotta be in Cape Town a little longer. I gotta run into Garth. I just have to. I love Garth. He's a musician. Makes his own instruments. That kind of thing. Okay, let me leave this one. One more wetting of the whistle, just in case. Coconut water, gotta have the coconut water, because I had terrible Chardonnay last night. What was the my fault? My sister wanted it. Man. I'm the wine connoisseur. I know what kind of wine to get. Well, then again, I'm a red wine guy, so, you know. Here we go. So, I always make like I'm a drummer, but I'm, oh, hey, Instagram. It's me, T. Fun Patterson's taking a train to Tibet. Well, did my morning walk like that, you know, and I'm here. Just, oh, did I tell you? I, I want. I, I I said I was going. Oh, I did a post last night at the theater at the at the Commodore Theater. I saw Black Panther. 
Wakanda forever, right? I, I'm not going to spoil it for you. I think I might spoil one thing. I'm not going to spoil it for you. Even though I know people they did that. I don't. I don't. Whatever y'all do on the internet, but I, I like people to go see it for themselves. And, and look, when I was asked to direct WBI, what really nice about it is that my film critic, you know, Paul Wonder, right? Sometimes he would we would go to movies together. And we wouldn't know anything about the movie because it's just coming out. They'd be give you a little press release or something like that. But I might see a movie like a year before it came out, or definitely months before it came out. Right, so it, it was no, you know, b people spoiling it for you, or people talking about it. The buzz wasn't in yet, like that. And even now, Mike, Mike Sarge, but I can't hook up with Mike because I'm here. But you no, know, he he goes see a film, and then you know, I'll, I'll ask him like like I have to, I have to see go see uh, Till the Emmett Till movie because he says I see it, you know, well, he said like that. He was kind of, but you know, I know film critics. Let's put um, that was the best thing being a film critic because you see stuff before the buzz gets around. And I, 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 for some reason, not for some reason, I did, I didn't know, I didn't, I didn't see, I didn't even see no trailers for Black Panther. I ignored the trailers. I didn't get no buzz about it. I just, I saw it without, like back in the day when it just came out, right? And so a lot of people, I, I get a little answer to things that people say they, they have some issues with it or something like that. I had no issues with it at all. I liked the movie. <laughs> but let me put it this way. Black Panther, the first one, you know, to me, let me put it in a capsule for you, because that's what film critics do, right? It was an African-American, right? You know, people do whatever you want to call us, you know. Black people who grew up in America, <laughs> love letter to Africa. You got that? That's called, it was African-American filmmaker, whatever, love letter to Africa. This here, Wakanda Forever, was an African American love letter to ourselves. Okay, they said, "Well, what about the old women thing? Whatever." I had. I don't care about that. What oh, the women were? The, and the, the men do? Who you? She I don't care. First of all, Letitia Wright, a shout out, great, good actress. I'm just say good. I'm not gonna say great actress because she ain't done enough roles. I guess you know what I mean. But she carried that movie. She did carry the movie. Really, really well, you know. Yeah, I know Angela Bassett did her little, did her big thing like that. So she, so there's a lot of because it's a woman, it's a woman-centered movie. It was like, it was like you know, more emotional. Let's put it that way, right? But I like all the action scenes, everything that was happening. I got it, and it's just about it's really about uh, dare I say, black people, black and brown people. Whatever, it, 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 you know, white people weren't really in it. Well, white people were, as usual, the usual suspects and. The the, the, the the villains, you know what I mean? Well, except for except for our, I guess he has a black card, you know, you know the the the, the Martin Freeman character, the CIA guy, right? But he's even anyway. So 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 you can see that. So, but I would, but so anyway. So if you didn't like it because it was too many the women were in charge with her, fine. Hey, criticize all you want. That's 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 your thing, but you have to see what it was, you know. See, because a lot of times people don't look for things for, the, for what it is; they want it to be something else. Well, if you want it to be something else, then you gotta go through that system, that Hollywood system, so you can make it something else. Shout out to Ryan Cooler. Hey man, I got you. And what I usually listen to, what I watch for is the script. Let me tell you something. I just use spoiler alert. Look. I guess you're gonna know it by now. You should know it by now. If you don't know it by now, I'm sorry. Turn this off right now. I knew this. I was sh not shouting this. I was saying this when the first movie ended, before Chadwick Boseman uh, passed. Right? I said, "Hey, Black Panther and the Kia, going? They they were boinking, you know. I mean, they. Let me put it this way. They did the poetic justice boinking." I said, what are you talking about the Poetic Justice moment? You know Poetic Justice, you know, when poor old, uh, that was uh, uh, Janet Jackson, right? And uh, and uh, Tupac, uh, I don't think she really liked Tupac, or whatever it is. But their love scene was he kissed her on the on the cheek when the little dude doing the thing. They, were, they weren't up there grossly pointing, so you didn't see that. It was like PG, whatever it is. So that indicates, so you have to, anyway, that indicated whatever. So when, uh, when uh, 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 Chadwick and and uh, and Nakia, oh, Nakia, I'm not specific, and you know, uh, 
and young go, you know, the woman, right? <laughs> when they were walking through the village, whatever, and they talked about whatever, I said, oh, they just finished boinking. I said, that, in my brain, I'm going to say, so, so when, so I, so I wanted to make figured they were going to have a kid. That's just, uh, I don't, I didn't do, I don't do the comics, so I don't know when he did the lore or whatever. So I think he used, he does have a kid with, with Storm or something like that. But anyway, I'm talking about Black Panther. Anyway, back to the point. So at the end, when it was revealed that, you know, that to me, <laughs> I was, it was it didn't surprise me at all, right? But see, you have to understand, people are looking at film, I don't know how they're looking at food, what they want to make, but you have to watch, follow the, the, the writing. There's a logic in writing. You know what I mean? There's a logic in writing. You cannot, uh, once something is started, there's some logical things. There's only so, certain logical places you can go with the writing. And it says logic says that, you know, Nikia, Nikia had to have uh, um, uh, Chichala's baby. Just, just the logic of the thing, you know, because because that's the only person he was listening to. You know, Killmarker and her were saying the same thing, right? And then what happens? Well, he does what they say, but it's just that Killmarker was saying in his way, and, well, Nakia was saying in her way, but they, they were saying the exact same thing. So, anyway, there is a pride that I'm not going to tell you because, uh, um, but anyway, I understood the whole film. You should see it for yourself. Make your own conclusions. You can get on whatever, whatever. But what's upsetting me these days is all these people that have no bona fides in anything, right, talk and smack about stuff. I guess because you think you're on the internet, you could just <laughs> say anything you want. But, you know, you ain't qualified, you know? So if you ain't a filmmaker, if you're not in the comic world, then you can say what you want about things, but you said it, right? But I had listen to your dumb behinds, right? You have these people that say, oh, but uh, they, they stole, Hollywood stole this from this and stole this from that. Ah, so what? <laughs> Big deal. It's Hollywood, you, it's Hollywood. What do you think they're gonna do, right? You just lucky that you, that Ryan Coogler was the one that, that that's adapting it, that's doing their bidding. You know what I mean? Because it could have been somebody else. I'll give you a better example. I'm gonna, I'm gonna end here. I think. Why not have this whole Kyrie thing or some sort of film that was made or whatever? Had and, and people are getting up. Some you know some white white people are getting upset about the film. Well, but those same white people, they're the ones that made Birth of a Nation. You know, D.W. Griffith. So we can tell them. Well, you wasn't upset. You ain't denouncing or whatever. You D.W. You not making all them people of the lineage of D.W. Griffith. You know, apologize for what you want. You see, there's always look. All I'm saying is this: you can't bully. There's certain black people you can't bully, right? And if you try to say you age like like the women, you, they now they got black women trying to say what? What's the matter with you people? Don't you see? You're being played? The white supremacist, I'm sorry to do this. There's, okay, there's, I'm going to do Miss Neely Fuller things. There's, there's uh, non-white people, there's white people, then there's white supremacists, right? The white supremacists pull, yanks the chain of the, of the well, regular white people, you know, because they, they, they'll they lose if, you know, because whatever it is. And they yank the chain of a certain echelon of, 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 uh, of, of non-white people that want to be white people, of course they can't, you know what I mean? Then there's, you know, uh, then there's, then there's all kinds of mixed in there. Like somebody's, somebody's white, but they'll, they'll say, no, but I'm more religious than I'm white. What? What are you talking about? I'm talking about my religion. No, but you're still white. You're still acting like a white supremacist. So what's, what's your deal? You know what I mean? Yeah, but I'm a non, I'm a non-white that own a basketball team. Yeah, but you're acting like a white supremacist. Don't you understand? So what's the, that, that, what don't you understand about this, right? <laughs> so, Anyway, all I'm saying is all right now. I don't know why people want to do this. So they, I guess they, people are trying to do this since at least in film since the '70s. You know when you want to prove that you're you're a big bad dude, and so you beat up on some big black guy. Well, now they're trying to beat up on black on black men in general. They even sending women's to do it. Black women's, you know, of course they always send other black men to do it because it's still, you know, this is a long history. The Boulay, back when, back when Birth of the Nation was made in what, uh, 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 1915, but tell me 1959, all around that era, what, what did we have? That's the rise of the Boulay. We, that's the white supremacists getting some, some black people to do their bidding. 
This one, it's always been around. But now what's happening, there's a, it's been so long, some people have studied it. Some black men, some of us, we see what the deal is. If you, let me put it this way. If you come from the uh, the NAACP branch, that's you, okay? If, 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 if the modern way, let's say, if you come from the Obama branch, that's you. I come from the Steve Coakley branch, right? <laughs> I'm the Steve, I'm, the, I'm, a, I'm a, a orphan of Steve, of, of, I'm a Coakley orphan, right? I'm a, I'm a Fanon orphan, right? <laughs> Uh, I'm a Nkrumba often, right? I'm an Alame Brath often. You see? That's who I am. That's my lineage. That's my line. Now, if your line is, I don't know where all the other lines, I don't know what you've been informed by, whatever it is, but if you ain't been informed by, by certain kinds of people, then you're going to act a certain kind of way. You see? So that's what it is. So let me just stop right there. Poor babies. I'm sorry about y'all. But it's on. I'm telling you, black men, I mean, real black. Here's the question. Who would you want to be? This is a military question. Sorry. Okay. Who would you want to be in a foxhole with? Okay. Stephen A. Or Kyrie Irving? Just asking. If you had to come to battle, who would you want to be in a foxhole with? What's that What's that girl that, that, that really did that, that really... Um, one, of, one of these black women commentators is coming down on Kyrie. I'm not, let me not name any names because people don't, they, they focus on that and not focus on what I'm trying to say. I already mentioned two names. I'm sorry, I like that. But the point, that's the point, you know? Uh, the, 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 anyway, you understand what I'm saying, right? You have to always ask yourself who you want to be in a foxhole with. That's it. That's all ultimately my question. Usually I don't have a whole bunch of people, so. That's what it is. So there you go. I'll leave you with that. Who you want to be in a foxhole with? That means who you want to be in battle with. Who's got your back? Who's got your back? You don't want somebody that say they got your back. They don't got your back. They're going to stab you in the back. You know? That's the question. All right. I'll check you out later. Be well. Bye. Well, that went and this whole thing is going way too long. So I, I'm, I'm, I don't apologize. This is archival purposes only. This is why we look. I don't ask for subscribers, so I ain't asking for none. I don't ask for likes, I ain't asking for no likes. And you know, uh, I don't monetize nothing. I don't. I, everything is Creative Commons. So, and you and. It's like anything, you don't have to, or you could turn the dial or not listen, or, you know. Now, what should I call this? Foxhole people. Foxhole people. The foxhole people. Foxhole people. P. E O P L E. I gotta make it black, so I put the bracket there, put an S there. Fox the B capital P. The foxhole peoples. <sighs> foxhole people. I have to put the brother there. Foxhole people. I'll, I'll leave it like that. It's not Fox F O X X. It's not the the, the where, where um, Corey Holcomb came from. Remember that. Yeah, let me do Western Branch. I should put the brother, the brothers, the brother. No, the Foxhole people. I'll leave it like that. Okay, share. I'll put the brother. I left the brother out there. Well. I don't have to do the brother all the time. Did I put share? What happened? I don't see anything happening. I don't see anything happening. Oh, let me go back here. I put share. I don't see it. 
It usually goes zzz, 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 and I don't see that. Oh. Oh yeah, here it is. It did go up, but up rather quickly. Let me make sure. It's me, T. Fuck Patterson's taking the train to Tibet. Well, didn't want to walk back then. Yeah, just oh, did I tell you? I I I said I was going. Well, I did a post last night at the theater. Yeah, this is it. Okay. So that's done. Okay, everything's done. I'm happy. I had the thing all the way. Nah, I don't worry about it. You're there. Okay, so this has got to go up. Then, okay, let me tell you what happens. Like I explain to you all the time. It should be, be, be whatever for right now. This is the making of so that I get, I record what I did on Instagram onto my YouTube. My YouTube is picked up by my bit shoot. So, and then, so what happens is basically what I'm saying, my commentary is recorded by both YouTube, uh, well, well, the Instagram's recorded by Instagram, YouTube, and BitChute, and you know what it is. And, ooh, we're going 40 minutes. This is way too long. I got to go. Y'all take care. Talk to you later.